Large language models are expensive, but careless token usage will blow up your budget faster. Whether you're using Claude Code, Cursor, Klein, or any other AI-powered coding tool, there's a good chance you're using more tokens than necessary and spending more on API costs because of it. And the key to fixing that is to one, understand how LLMs actually calculate their costs, and two, optimize your usage around it. So in this video, I'll break down exactly how LLM API pricing works, then I'll show you ways to optimize token usage and reduce token waste so that you can build more while spending less. Let's get started. First, let's break down how LLMs actually calculate costs. LLM pricing is based entirely on token usage, and that includes both the input you send to the model and the output it generates back to you. The more tokens you give the model, the higher the computation cost, and that means the higher your API bill will be. So what exactly is a token? Contrary to what most people assume, LLMs don't read raw text the way humans do. They break it down into smaller units called tokens. At a high level, a token is just a chunk of text that can be as short as one character or as long as a full word. You can think of tokens as the language that LLMs actually understand. So before processing your input, the model converts everything into tokens. So how do LLM companies like Anthropic or OpenAI calculate what they charge you? It all comes down to how many tokens you use and which model you are using. Pricing is typically listed per 1 million tokens, and you are billed for both input and output tokens. Each model has its own rates. For example, Claude Opus 4 costs $15 per million input tokens and $75 per million output tokens. Whereas Claude Sonnet 4 is more affordable, it costs $3 per million input tokens and $15 per million output tokens. So what counts as input tokens? These are anything you send to the model. So they include things like your prompt, any uploaded files or images, any system instructions, memory lookup or settings, and for output tokens, that's simply everything the model returns to you. Things like responses, code, summaries, images, whatever it generates. And here's the part that most people miss, and it's especially important when working with LLMs. LLMs are stateless. They don't remember anything between messages. So when you send a follow-up message, the model has no memory of what came before. So to maintain context, your entire conversation history, every prompt, every instruction, and every output has to be resent as part of the new input. That means every follow-up message doesn't just include what you just typed. It also includes everything from earlier in the chat. So as your conversation grows, so does the size of each request. And that means every new message becomes more expensive to process. To make this more clear, let's walk through a example. Let's say you send this message to Claude Code. Help me understand what this function does. Here's how the token usage looks like. For input tokens, let's assume this prompt is 1,000 tokens for simplicity. Now, there are other things like system prompts and memory, but let's just ignore those for now. Once the model processes your input, it generates a output. Let's assume the output is 2,000 tokens. So for the single request, you are using 1,000 input tokens and 2,000 output tokens for a total of 3,000 tokens. Now, let's say you send a second message in that same chat. Help me understand what this function does does, function XYZ. Here's how the token usage looks like. We'll assume the prompt is once again around 1,000 tokens. And let's also assume the output is again around 2,000 tokens. But here's the critical part. Because this is a follow-up in the same chat thread, the model doesn't just process your new message. It also reprocesses everything from message one. That's because these models are stateless and assumes the prior context is still relevant. Your input for message two now includes 1,000 tokens from prompt one, 2,000 tokens from output one, and 1,000 tokens from prompt two, which totals 4,000 input tokens. Add 2,000 output tokens for message two, and your second request totals 6,000 tokens. Even though message one and message two by themselves are identical, each with a 1,000 token prompt and a 2,000 token output, message two ends up costing nearly twice as much. Why? Because you are sending message to as a follow-up, 
the model has to reprocess all of message one as part of the new input to maintain context. So instead of costing 3000 tokens like message one, message two actually costs 6000 tokens, 4000 in input and 2000 in output. Now imagine sending a third message in the same chat. Your input will become everything from message one plus everything from message two plus the new message three. With every follow-up, the model reprocesses all previous inputs and outputs even if they are no longer relevant. What feels like a simple back and forth can quickly turn into a expensive thread. And that's because total token usage doesn't grow linearly, it compounds. And here's something just as important. Long conversations don't just cost more, they actually reduce model performance. As the context window grows, the model has to process more of the conversation, even parts that may no longer be relevant. That extra noise makes it harder for the model to focus on what matters. It can start to lose track of key details, repeat itself, or respond with less precision because it's overwhelmed by too much information. So in addition to compounding costs, long chats can lead to reduced accuracy and unfocused responses. And just to clarify, this is a simplified example to illustrate the concept. In real world applications, LLM platforms often apply optimizations like context caching, token compression, or using lightweight models to summarize previous messages. These techniques help, but they're not perfect. And they don't eliminate the core issue. Token usage compounds quickly in long chats, and if you're not careful, it can quickly blow up your costs. Now that we understand how LLMs calculate cost, let's talk about how to reduce token waste and optimize your usage. Tip one, start a new chat once you finish a task. Never reuse the same chat window for multiple unrelated tasks. Like we saw in the earlier example, every time you continue a conversation in the same thread, you are also dragging along all the tokens from your previous interactions, even if they are no longer relevant. So get in the habit of starting a new chat once a task is done. Here's how you do it. If you are using Claude code, use the clear command to wipe out the entire chat history and start a new chat window. So in this chat window that I've opened, I have a bunch of messages and it just goes on and on and on. And you don't want this. So you do not want to have these super long conversations if possible, because what happens is whenever you send a new message, everything in this long conversation also gets sent to the LLM. So even if you just send a simple request like what's one plus one, the model is going to process the entire conversation and that's going to cost you a lot of tokens. So once you complete a task, you should always run slash clear. And what this is going to do is it's going to clear up your entire conversation history. So it's going to clear all of this and it's going to free up all the context. Then it's going to open a new chat window. So let's do that right now. So let's just hit enter. And now if you look, there's no more previous history. Like I try to scroll back, but there's no more previous history. There's no content. This is a brand new chat window with everything erased. And this is what you want to get in the habit of doing because now if you say, you know, what's one plus one, it's simply just going to do this part. There's nothing else it's going to add on to the input. The rule of thumb is simple. One chat window per task. Of course, there are exceptions, like when your next task builds directly on the last one, or when you're working on something long and complex that needs ongoing context. And that brings us to tip number two. Tip number two, summarize chats before they get long. Sometimes you're working on a large or complex task, like building out a major feature, and starting a new chat right away just isn't practical. You still need the context from earlier conversations. In these cases, here's what you do. Once your chat reaches around 50% of the context limit, or you feel you had a decent amount of back and forth discussion, summarize the conversation and start fresh. In my experience, 50% is about the point where Claude code starts to lose focus, but feel free to adjust that threshold based on your own experience. Claude code also allows you to provide custom instructions for how it will summarize your conversation. For example, you can tell it to only summarize the last two messages or focus on just the technical details and skip the general discussion or summarize only the action items or open items or summarize it in a certain format like XML or JSON. Here's how you do it. If you're using Claude code, run the compact command. This will automatically summarize your entire conversation and launch a new chat window with that summary preloaded. 
So let's walk through a example. So I'm in Claude code and this is a new chat window. I have a very long conversation going on. I asked it a bunch of questions, some relevant and some not, and it's just pages and pages of text. And if you look at the status indicator at the bottom right, it says I have 34% of free context left, which means I've used 66%. So that's not good. And one thing to mention here is that Claude code does try to help you by auto compacting your chat once it hits 95% capacity, but don't rely on it. Because Claude waits until the context is 95% full before auto compacting, it can run out of space before it finishes summarizing your conversation, leaving you with an incomplete summary or even a error. Okay, back to the example. So for this chat, let's say I only want to summarize and keep only the last message because it's the one I'm working on and everything before it is no longer relevant. So in this case, my last message was asking Claude code to create an implementation plan for a new feature to add animals to this API. To do this, I'm going to type out slash compact and you can see here that I have the option to add a custom summary instruction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, please only summarize and keep the last message. Now I'm going to hit enter and let it process. Okay, it looks like Claude code has finished compacting. We can see that we have a new chat window with a summary of our previous conversation, which should only include that implementation plan that we saw earlier. So this is that new implementation plan. And if you look at the bottom right, we no longer have that status indicator, which is telling us that we have used 66% of our context window because now it has been reset. So now we have trimmed out all the unnecessary context. So if we were to continue our conversation, not only is it more focused now, but it's also more token efficient now. And this is why it's important to use the compact statement. This approach helps you manage long multi-step tasks without dragging along thousands of unnecessary tokens, keeping your interactions focused and your cost in check. Tip number three, choose the right model for the right task. Most AI coding tools automatically select a model for you, but that doesn't always mean it's the most cost-effective or even the most performance-effective option. For example, Claude Co currently defaults to Opus 4, which is their most powerful, but also their most expensive model. It's great for complex, reason-heavy tasks, but total overkill for simpler tasks. So instead of blindly relying on the tool to choose for you, it's worth taking control and selecting the right model for the job. Here's how to do it. In Claude code, use the slash model command to switch between models manually. Let's walk through a quick example. So this is a brand new chat window. And if we run slash model, we can see that the current model selection is default. This means that Claude code is going to decide which model to use, which in most cases is going to be Opus 4, which is their most powerful, but their most expensive model. So in this window here, the only two options you have initially are default and software. Sonnet. But if you want to use an older model, such as Sonnet 3.7 or even Sonnet 3.5, then first go to their model's website. So go to this website. So look at the first column and find a model that you like, then copy the name of that model. So let's just say that I want to use Claude Sonnet 3.5. What I'm going to do is copy the name right here. Then I'm going to go back to Claude code. For now, I'm just going to exit out of this. I'm going to go back to the homepage and I'm going to write slash model. And then here I can specify the specific model that I want to use. So let's just copy and paste that in. So this is saying that I want to use Sonnet 3.5. Let's hit enter. And then now you can see here that the model has been set to Sonnet 3.5. And if you want to switch back and forth between models, just select them in model. So if I go back to model, now you can see that I have this third option, this custom one that I just inputted. So I have my default, I have Sonnet and 3.5, and I can choose between the two. So let's say I hit Sonnet. Well, now it's back to Sonnet 4. And that is how how you add a custom model in Claude code. Here's a simple workflow I recommend when starting a new task. First, start with a powerful model to reason through the high-level work. Map out all relevant information, identify edge cases, plan out the system architecture, and sketch out the implementation plan. Then switch to a lighter, cheaper model to handle the follow-through, like refining outputs or writing supporting code and documentation. Don't default to using the most powerful model for everything. It's not cost-effective, and it can 
even lead to overthinking on simple tasks. For reference, here are some more examples on when to use more powerful models versus lighter, cheaper models. Choosing the right model at the right time helps you strike a balance between cost, performance, and speed. And over time, that adds up in a big way when you're working with LLMs every day. So that's a breakdown of how LLMs calculates costs and some tips on how to optimize your token usage. Hope this was helpful and see you all in the next one.